Please pray and consider sowing a financial gift today to help keep spiritual encounters reaching the world on Fringe Radio. Simply go to the Upper Room Fellowship and Casper McLeod Ministries, theupperroomfellowship.org, and look for the donate button down on the right side of the page. If you would like to hear more and have Pastor Casper minister at your church, please go to the top of our page and click on Contact Us link. Welcome to another Spiritual Encounters, sponsored by the Upper Room Fellowship and Casper McLeod Ministries. What are we observing happening on the world stage today? And what can we do about it? Prayer is a very powerful weapon. In 1 John 5, 4 it says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Look, we're almost a cashless society at this point. Just as the Holy God book to the supernatural is prophesied was going to come to pass, there's wars, rumors of wars, famines and pestilence and earthquakes in various places, nations and kingdoms coming against each other, lying signs and wonders, the hybrid program, mark of the beast technology, UFOs burgeoning and not going away. Well, the Lord Jesus said, see that you not be troubled by any of it. Because all these things shall come to pass, but the end is not yet. But we read further in Luke 21, 28. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up. Lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. So what we're supposed to be doing as we await the glorious return of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Messiah, Yahshua. We're instructed in places like Matthew 6, 9. Our Father, which is art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as it is in heaven. So let's bring some heaven to earth, hey? Bring some heavenly encouragement to someone today. Everyone needs that hope that's within you. Keep walking in Christ's love because the mercy, grace, and love that you extend to others is the mercy, grace, and love the Lord extends to you. The Lord said in Luke 21, 15, For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gain, say, nor resist. When I say hallelujah, because all things are possible with God, let's begin today's program. Welcome to another edition of Spiritual Encounters, and I'm your lion-hearted host, Pastor Casper. <coughs> well, I've got a very exciting uh, thing to tell you about because my mate Ale Marzuli is here with us tonight, and uh, this is pre-recorded because he's coming into town, and we're going to be doing a conference together this weekend in North Georgia. Ale, welcome to Spiritual Encounters. Great to be here, Casper. Thanks for having me on. So, tell me, what do you think you're going to be talking about this time? I've been with you doing a number of conferences over the years and you always have new information to share. Um, what do you think you're going to be touching on this time? Well, pretty much uh, we're going to do the uh, UFO update. Uh, lots to talk about with that. Lots of uh, fascinating footage and uh, uh, new stories to share. And of course, we want to give Armitrail of a Nephilim because uh, that's, that's really, the two books have been on that. Actually, the Nephilim, I've talked to pretty much all nine books uh, discuss one way or the other uh, the presence of a Nephilim. And so the two actually converge. There'll be two presentations, and that's what uh, we'll talk about. But uh, i got to tell you, Casper, things are heating up. There's no doubt about it. Um, it looks like, in, in my opinion, I think we're going to see disclosure um, sooner than later. And I realize that, that for some people that's just like, whoa, you got to be kidding me. But no, I just think that, uh, that we're on the verge of something uh, too many sightings are going on on a global level, and the church needs to understand what it is that they're looking at, uh, what's manifesting on the planet. So when it does actually reveal itself completely, they won't be taken 
uh, in by it. They won't be deceived by what they see. Uh, on the trail of a Nephilim, we'll be talking about that. Uh, latest from Peru, um, what, what's happening with the DNA evidence, where we are. Lots to talk about. I promise you guys you won't be disappointed if you come to the conference, and uh, we're certainly excited about it. I'm really looking forward to getting to spend some more time with you. And, um, you know, again, I'm reminded um, the Scripture tells us, Luke 10, 19, Behold, I give you unto you power to tread on serpents, scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. You know, a lot of people, I find, um, they're just frightened. The church has you know, been conditioned and programmed that they're frightened to even hear the truth sometimes. Um, so I really encourage people to come because... I, I've been with LA a number of times, and, and you would definitely experience the presence of God when he speaks. Um, and this is not something to be afraid of. This is something that we need to know of what's unfolding. But you probably won't be listening to Fringe Radio unless you're already investigating that anyways. So um, <laughs> do you think – I've got people that um, have contacted me from other countries um, – Scientists that, that actually told me a couple of days ago they thought maybe the present administration already had Nephilim operating in it. Um, what's your take on that? The modern day Nephilim. Well, I think that we're we're starting to see them. I'll be talking about some, and reading some of the interviews I've done with people that have had encounters uh, fairly recently, and people can judge for themselves whether or not they're tied into the administration or not. I mean, there's really no way to know that. But I got to tell you, you know, things are things are heating up. It is getting bizarre. And uh, there are reports that are coming across my desk and, and they're they're bizarre. I mean, they're really, really strange. So what can I tell you? It, <laughs> there's, very, <laughs> there's very strange things going on. Um, I know you're you're keeping a real close um tabs on what's happening in the Middle East and how it's spilling over um, in the world right now. Uh, it, it's interesting. I, I know you and I had a, a chat earlier about how um, maybe like the Palestinians have been teaching their children that there's obviously a spirit of hatred operating there with great intensity for at least over the last 30 years um, and, and with the mindset of going out killing innocent victims, um, maybe the last 20 years, which is really out of the Nazi playbook, as I've heard you say several times. Um, so, again, you, we think this, Jesus said that this generation, um, we think this could be us, um, the way things are unfolding right now, with everything that's happening. Um, could you maybe elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah, I, I think that we are in the in the latter days. I think that all the signs that that Jesus warns us about are, are full operation. I've never seen the global situation this charged, this complex, and in some ways this hopeless. And like you said earlier, you know, we've, we've not been given a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. And we're supposed to look up, realizing that our redemption is coming when we see the things that Jesus tells us to keep watch for, which are wars and rumors of wars, famines, pestilence, earthquakes in diverse places, and troublesome times. Men fainting from fear from what is coming upon the earth. Um, this is all in operation. This is what we're seeing now. We shouldn't be afraid. We should be expectant. We should be looking for the return of the king. And that's what we talk about. That's what we write about. Um, the, all the conferences we go to talk about this incessantly. We are, we are believing that the king's return is soon. Because, as I said before, the only way out of this mess may be up. And I mean that. The only way out of the current mess may be up. Uh, you're not going to fix it. You're not going to fix guys like Kim Jong-un. You're not going to fix Khomeini in Iran. You're not going to fix the vitriol that we see uh, in the Palestinians and stab the Jews. Uh, you're not going to change the ideology of uh, Tsar Vladimir Putin. You're not. You're not going to change the heart of Barack Hussein Obama. It's not going to happen. You're not going to somehow fix the $19 trillion in debt that the United States is. You're not going to stop the earthquakes that we're seeing and the rise of the earthquakes that we see happening greater and greater with more frequency. Uh, people say that that's just uh, because we have the Internet now or more connected. Look, uh, the average earthquake in Oklahoma was two. All right, two per year. They're just under 600 for, 19, for 2015. Just under 600. You think that's an uptick? Of course it is. The rise of the volcanic activity, 
Um, and this is what I'm talking about. We are reaching uh, a time where there's no, there's no turning back from. There's, there's no return from this. You're not going to fix it. It's the time, the time of Jacob's trouble. It's the time that's been prophesied in the biblical prophetic narrative more than any other time in history. What was written will come to pass. What was foretold will unfold. And if I can say what was written is happening on the 6 o'clock news. There are some people who go, well, you know, we shouldn't be looking at the papers and the news to uh, interpret biblical prophecy. Sure we should. <laughs> what else? What are we going to go by? You know, are you <laughs> kidding me? I mean, it's just an absurd statement. Says who? You know, uh, of course we should be looking at what's going on. That's how we find out. Men will increase. You know, men will run to and fro over the face of the earth. Knowledge will increase. Well, that's how we find out, by looking at the Internet, by combing the news stories, by knowing that Vladimir Putin and 150,000 Ruskies are now in the Middle East and the Chai Coms have just docked uh, off Syria. Are you kidding me? I mean, that's, that's where we are. And the only reason why we know that is because of the news. So is it Ezekiel 38? No. But certainly if it, if we're looking at the formation of that. Um, they could pull back. I get it. But it's, it's for the student of, of biblical prophecy. This is what we look for. And so, in my opinion, that what was foretold is now unfolding in front of us. Uh, the prophetic narrative, the biblical prophetic narrative, is more true, more real than anything else. It's something we can hang our hats on. And that's why, of course, uh, we'll be talking about that uh, at the conference. I, I've heard you do a wonderful presentation of, uh, based on things like Matthew 24. Can you give a few little highlights about it, how we're seeing all these things um, lining up, unfolding at the moment? Well, certainly when we look at the wars and rumors of wars, we can see that, that the world is embroiled right now, specifically in the Middle East, um, in war. But then you, you look at the southern border here in this country, which is completely uh, tumultuous. And, you know, Mexico is now a place that's uh, without law, without the rule of law in Mexico. The drug cartels control much of the territory. And, you know, the federales don't do doodly squat. It's a corrupt government. And, uh, you know, I could go on here, but but we see wars and rumors of wars happening everywhere. Uh, we see troubling times, signs in the times, just like Yeshua warns us, like the Fukushima disaster. Millions of gallons of radioactivity are being poured into the Pacific Ocean on a daily basis. That is changing. Uh, that is changing the life forms in the Pacific Ocean. It is killing, in my opinion, um, and and you know perhaps millions. Of, of aquatic life in the Pacific. It is, it is perhaps changing for all time uh, the ability for some of these, some of the sea life to procreate into the next generation. We, we, you know, we don't know the full impact of it, and we're certainly not being told the truth. Uh, we look at nation against nation, which again is prophesied by Yeshua. We look at the rise of the earthquake, which I talked about, which again is prophesied by Yeshua. All this is not going away. And, and this, this is why, you know, we do these conferences. I write the book, Days of Chaos, Watchers 9, Days of Chaos. You know, you look at the information and you tell us where we're going wrong. I mean, you, I've heard you so eloquently explain before how in, in times past, because of communication, we wouldn't have known about an earthquake. Um, and now it's exactly. in real time. My iPhone so, will ping for an earthquake 6.0 and greater. Just like when a missile was launched into Israel, I have red alert on my iPhone. My iPhone will tell me that the missile has just been launched because the Israeli intelligence picks up on it and they announce to the Israeli citizens. I mean, are you kidding me? This is where we are in 2015. My iPhone's pinging, letting me know about 6.0 earthquakes. And at the same time, if there's a rocket that's launched from Gaza or, you know, Lebanon, I know about it. I mean... You go back 150 years, none of that doesn't exist. But because we are in these days of chaos, because we are in the end times, this is what we see. I um, had opportunity to talk with David Jacobs um, that you've interviewed for the Watchers several times. And at one point I, I asked him about, um, well, what about the people that, uh, I mean, knowing that David's not um, a believer like us, and I asked him, what, what about the people that have said stop in the name of Jesus and the abductions have stopped? Um, he took a position that that wasn't happening, that he had met with five different ministers that had come to him. 
Um, and, and again, that, that reminded me when he, when he was taking this position that, you know, it's absolutely hopeless for him. Possibly it's his at this time, but for us, we, we know in Psalm 138, it, it, Jesus said he exalts his word even above his name. So you can call on the name of Jesus all you want, but if you're not a doer of the word, it's not going to work very well. I don't think in any dimension. Um, could you share some light on that one? I do, and I, I've got to get going because I've got other other commitments here. But this will be so. This will be the last question, okay? Okay. Um, yeah, with 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 in in the uh, in regard to Dr. David Jacobs, you know, I've interviewed him numerous times, and um, he is, in my opinion, one of the foremost uh, researchers when it comes to the whole uh, abduction phenomenon. And uh, um, what we're seeing, and 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 look, I just I just had a in, in, in politics, prophecy, and the supernatural in the September issue. I interviewed a man who was literally pulled off the bed. Actually, the October issue, pulled off the bed. Um, by a force. He found himself levitating over the floor. Uh, it's a classic abduction scenario. He was terrified. He was petrified. He couldn't move, paralyzed. And uh, he, could, he couldn't even say the name of Yeshua, say the name of Jesus. He couldn't say it. And finally, he mustered up enough strength to say it. And the moment he did that, it, it broke the force and he was back in bed. He knew they were out there, out, out in his yard, you know, uh, second story house and Right on the other side of the wall, he wouldn't go to the window. He didn't want to see. He was terrified. Uh, The presence of evil was overwhelming. But the name of Yeshua and saying that broke the power. And that's just what the Bible tells us, that that name is above all other names. And that at the name of Jesus, at the name of Yeshua, every head will bow, every knee will bend. And that's exactly what happened. Uh, This man was a believer. He was an elder in his church. He wasn't involved in anything weird or backslidden in any way. And uh, but this is what happened. And this is what this is why the game is ramping up, Casper. And this is why we need to talk about what we're talking about. Well, it's really important that we do talk about these things. Um, it's, it's preparing people's hearts for what's coming. The Lord says, you know, men's hearts failing them for fear of what's going to happen. The heavens being shaken. Well, obviously, heavens not going to be shake. But the uh, second heavens where the enemy resides, that's going to be shook up. And um, so I'm really looking forward to seeing you in a few days. And um, again, anybody um, listening, uh, you, can, you can live stream this event. Um, do you have the, the uh, information handy? We can get it off your website. Yes, if, if you go to the blog, uh, which is lamarzuli.wordpress.com, lamarzuli.wordpress.com, scroll down, you'll see L.A. Marzulli speaking 2015, and it's right there, October 23rd to 25th. Uh, Pastor Casper, Ch- uh, Chief Joseph Riverwin, yours truly, um, freedomslightchurchofgod.org. Freedoms Light Church of God, all one word, freedomslightchurchofgod.org. Um, and it's called the Southern Appalachian Prophecy Conference. Check it out, folks. Hope to see you there. And Casper, thanks for having me on the show. Well, I will see you soon here, there, or in the air, matey. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Do you want to know what the Bible says about the future and get ahead of what is coming? Then make plans now to attend the Southern Appalachian Prophecy Conference online or in person Friday and Saturday, October 23rd and 24th at Freedom's Light Church of God in Ball Ground, Georgia, just north of Atlanta. Don't miss this opportunity to hear the latest prophetic information presented by best-selling author and teacher L.A. Marzu musician pastor Casper McLeod, Bill Flynn, and Chief Joseph Riverwind. Admission is $45 in advance and $55 at the door. The entire conference will be streamed live worldwide by SNTRadio.com. Streaming tickets are $10. Get your tickets now at freedomslightchurchofgod.org. That's freedomslightchurchofgod.org. Well, if you've just joined us, we've been talking with Ale Marzuli and uh, looking forward to being with him in a few days during this conference. Um, you know, think about it right now, that according to the number of studies, uh, it's one like uh, Elite Daily, um, a bunch of posters, there's now more people in England, in the UK, who believe in the UFOs and extraterrestrials coming to save the world than they do in the Holy God of the Bible. I mean, statistics are showing 
um, that roughly something like maybe 33 million UK citizens believe in the existence of aliens, while only 27 million believe in the existence of God. What is with that? How did that happen? Um, what kind of programming has been going on to alter people's reality here? So, you know, the fact is there's a substantial amount of evidence, as Alain and I have been talking about, where, um, and if you've seen any of the watches, especially watches 7 and 8, you know about um, people that have been in, abducted against their will uh, by so-called uh, extraterrestrials, which I now think are demons and drag, um, and implanted with some sort of strange microchip against their will. Those microchips, a number of scientists and researchers believe, is changing their DNA. Well, I can tell you from my research, uh, 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 as you know, writing my book, um, like, what was I thinking all about how thoughts are created? Your thoughts can change your DNA. So this could possibly be... Um, coming mock of the beast the scriptures have forewarned us about. And, you know, think about it. The, the American Institute of Health estimates that um, 75 to 90 percent of all visits to primary care physicians are simply because of stress-related problems. It means there's a spirit of fear that has come in and merged with your thinking as if it was your very own thoughts. So everywhere you look, um, people want to be free. I mean, unless you're in some sort of um, environment where you, you've been programmed that that's not a good thing, um, like some of the, the, the Middle Eastern cultures with now um, making uh, the scene on the world stage, as it were. So again, we need to decide, are we going to think about things from a biblical perspective and see them the way Papa God sees them and he instructs us how to apply and appropriate his word in our life um, it seems that, to me, many many of the, the deliverance ministries have, have failed in a number of ways because they've, they've tried to deliver people without discipling them first. So if you're discipling um, somebody, then you can teach them how this got in, how, how to deal with it more effectively and how to keep it out. Like if somebody broke in your home um, at night, you didn't know how they were getting in, well, what's going to stop it from getting in again? So I, I think... One of the major things here, we just we have to um, understand faith. We have to understand faith for for healing, as we do for restoration. Faith for anything that you need uh, tells us in places like uh, Mark eleven uh, twenty four. Therefore, I say unto you, what sort of things you um, pray for, believe that you receive them, and you shall have whatsoever you, you, you say. Um, this is an amazing promise that the Lord has given us. And a lot of times it seems that uh, if, if you don't know what the promises are or you don't know what the conditions are to activate the promises, then how are you going to receive from these things? Um, you know, this is telling us to have faith in God continually. Um, you could say to a mountain, you know, be thrown in the sea and it's going to obey. If you don't doubt in your heart, but believe those things that are going to take place, then it's going to be done for you. And actually... I um, don't have time to talk about it today, but um, there, there was somebody that actually did move a mountain in, in Egypt um, some hundreds of years ago, um, and we will talk about that in, again sometime, but I think we did cover it in one of our episodes. Um, so I'm teaching you these principles, and, and this is the sort of thing, you know, where there's, there's, there's no guarantee that anything's going to happen. If I can guarantee it, um, you wouldn't need faith for it. You wouldn't need faith for God to take care of you. But I reckon this way, um, we've got this amazing account in Daniel 3 of um, a couple of Israeli lads, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Now think about it. They did not have a completed Bible. They didn't have a, a total completed guidebook to the supernatural, right? But they knew enough that they weren't going to bow down to a false idol. And what happened? Because of their faith, they trust God no matter what, even if he didn't deliver them, they're still going to trust God. And they had this phenomenal, miraculous thing that changed King Nebuchadnezzar and, 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 and in history. They came out of a, a burning fire that they were thrown to their death in, and they saw four figures in there instead of three. And they came out not even smelling like smoke. You had Daniel in, in a lion's den coming out um, 
and uh, not not being devoured by lions. I mean, the, over and over again, the Lord has shown us wonderful places. So, I mean, I know the world's a mess, and as L.A. said earlier in this show, um, there's not maybe only one way out, and it's getting raptured out of this this madness and this fallen world. And that's still going to take faith. That's still going to be being a doer of the word and not a hearer only. So faith is vital that you receive um, anything from God. Um, if maybe there's somebody listening right now. You're, you're sick. Somewhere there's a schism in your body. You go to the church elders, right? James 5 tells us the, um, those are the spiritual guides that, and, and they should pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. And, and the prayer of faith is going to save those people that are sick. It's, they're going to heal them. It's going to restore them. If they've committed sin, they'll be forgiven. Well, how are you going to do that unless you confess that stuff? Right? It says, confess your sins to one another so you may be healed. Um, I, I, again, a lot of times today, in, in the way a, a lot of churches are uh, operating, it doesn't feel safe to go and confess your sins in, in front of a congregation. Um, there's a spirit of, of gossip that's loose and, and things like that. Um, we've got to be very, very careful to, to cover and protect our, our brothers and sisters. And when Jesus would perform miraculous healings, he often said to the person he healed this extraordinary statement. He said, your faith has healed you. There was a story um, in, in Matthew 9, uh, around verse 27, and Jesus you know, is, is, is passing through, and, and the people there have heard about the extraordinary miracles um, that he's performing. And these two blind men um, follow him. So it's interesting. He doesn't stop. He carries on and waits for them in, in a home. And think about two blind men trying to follow after the Lord Jesus here. How much more do we need to be following after him, right? So they reach the house where he went in. The blind men come in, and Jesus makes this remarkable statement. He, he looks at him and says, do you believe I'm able to do this? And they say, yes, Lord, we, we believe it. And so he touches their eyes, saying, according to your faith, your, your trust, your reliance on the word of God, the power that's invested in me, then be it done unto you, right? And, and immediately they're, they're able to see the, the complete vision back. How wonderful. Um, we've had Daniel Kalinda on the program before from Christful Nations and um, Peter Vandenberg from Christful Nations, the vice president of that organization. They've got incredible accounts um, and videotapes of them in crusades over in places like Africa where blind people see again, the, the deaf hear again, the lame gets up, people jumping out of wheelchairs. You know, I've, I've experienced it, the same sort of things in, in a number of my meetings um, in churches I've gone to speak at and minister at. Uh, people have been healed miraculously. So, I mean, you may be getting healed just listening to this program tonight because all things are possible with God. You had this lady um, in, in Matthew 9 as well that, uh, that was a woman that suffered from a, a flow of blood for over 12 years. And, and she had this idea, if I could just touch the helm of Jesus' garment, touch the fringe from his um, prayer cloth, uh, not cloth, it's a, get the word that the, um, the, the thing that people wear in the, in the, in the, in the Jewish community, the men wear this uh, prayer shawl. That's what I'm working. Thank you, Lord, looking for the word shawl. And so the, um, she just, now think about it. She could have been stoned to death in that culture um, because she was unclean and she went in. So she, they were, the um, officials uh, that city might have said she put everybody's life in danger, that they could have all been made unclean by her. But instead, she had this amazing faith. And she, she was like on a stealth mission. She, she got in there just to touch the, the, the fringe of his garment. And, and he turns around knowing somebody's touched him because he knows all things. And, it, and, and she's healed. And he looks at her and goes, daughter, she's terrified now that maybe she did something wrong. She knew she was healed the moment she touched him. And then he looks at her and says, take courage, daughter. Your faith has made you well. So at, at once this woman was restored to health. 
Um, maybe you need to be restored to health right now. And it's going to take faith. It's going to take mixing your faith with the Word of God. And the Lord, um, remember there's a story, the, the ten lepers. Now these guys, were, were leprosy was just a horrid, horrid disease. And it would just rot away the, the skin and body parts. And, and here's these ten lepers that have somehow overheard the miraculous miracles that are going on with this man, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And so they start the, the shout, take pity on us, Jesus, take pity on us, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said to them, go show yourself to the priest. Now it's interesting, he didn't say go show yourself to the doctor. He said, because they had doctors then, that, that lady that was suffering from the, the, the flow of blood for 12 years, she'd spent all the money trying to get healed by the, the local doctors, uh, probably went to some specialist as well. And it was none the better for it. So here are these ten lepers, and he tells them, go show yourself to the priest. And, and they were healed as they went. And one of them, you imagine this, they're, they're walking, and maybe he just notices his friends now have noses and ears again, and limbs are growing back, or he looks at his own skins, and his hands are back to normal, and his body realizes he's been amazingly healed and he, he runs back to the Lord Jesus he falls at his feet and, and and he starts worshiping the Lord and Jesus makes this statement to him well, where are the other nine weren't they cleansed as well weren't they healed as well, well of course they were only one comes back to um to worship the Lord to give thanks for this healing you know there's, there's people that, that come to church meetings because they just want something from God and, and then there's other people that, you know, maybe leave not being healed and go, well, maybe God doesn't love them as much as he loves somebody else that was healed, which is preposterous, really. It's really the wrong question to even ask. The question is not so much, you know, why didn't God heal you as it is? If you love God, you would have obeyed his commandments. And then you wouldn't have had to even go for this because we, it's his desire to, that you be blessed in your body, mind, spirit, and soul and and, and, and you know, prosper in all good things. That's his desire for you. So faith in, 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 in God is it's having confidence in knowing his word and being a doer of his word. And even if it doesn't happen in, in the way you think it's going to happen, believing that he'll make it happen the way he wants it to happen. God's word says, um, you know, believe it. And that pretty much should settle it. In all our world, people say, well, when I see it, when I see something, then I'll believe it. No, it's the other way around. God says, believe it, and then you'll see it. So this is real physical manifestations that, that have happened. You know, in Hebrews 11, it, it talks about uh, faith is a substance of things hoped for. So you could take that substance, you can take it under a microscope, and you can analyze it, and it's a real substance, right? Because we're, we're, we're thoughts... Um, you can you can see thoughts on, on under brain scans. You can you can see them. Um, these are real substance, right? We're always growing new architecture in our brain. So faith being the assurance, the the confirmation of understanding that the the things we're hoping for, the things we we want, the things we need, the conviction of that reality that that it's not been revealed to our senses yet. It's it's faith. Um, the Israelites, right? They the, under the, the, the uh, Moses and Aaron, they didn't even enter into the promised land because of why they they were suffering from entertaining spirits of doubt and unbelief, and then they caused them to be disobedient to the word of God. Now it says in Hebrews four two, for unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So we've got these guys in ancient Israel. They didn't mix the faith with the word of God when they heard it. But you can. There's still time for you today. To, you know, repentance is really changing the way you think about things, to think about them the way God thinks about them. Um, there's always hope with the Lord. Um, He's bringing us good tidings, the gospel of God, it's good news. So I want to bring some good news tonight on at this conference that's coming up. Um, you know, think about it. 
Jesus was not well received in, in his hometown of Nazareth when he went back there. And if there's a scripture that I think people struggle after, um, it says he, in Mark 6, 5, he says, uh, and there he did no mighty work save that he laid hands on a few sick folks and healed them. Well, hallelujah for the guys that got healed there. And then it says Jesus marveled because of their unbelief, because they had unbelief. And he went around the village teaching. And he needed to be taught the word. So I, I, I reckon that they saw this man grow up there and they, they didn't even come out to his meetings. Well, it's just Jesus and Nazareth. We saw him grow up here. Could that possibly be the reason he didn't do mighty works there? But it also indicates that there were so many there that, that didn't believe. They suffered from entertaining doubt and unbelief. And then we have the story where Jesus went and um, in Mark 5 and, and, and he ruined a, a perfectly good funeral that this, they were having for this little girl, this little girl that had died. And he came in the house and you know they're getting ready to have the, the funeral and Jesus walks in and ruins the funeral for everyone, which, hallelujah for that one. And, and he tells them, maybe he was saying, uh, calling things is not as if they were, and so now she's just asleep, and now they know she's dead, and they laugh at him, and they mock the Lord Jesus Christ and Nazareth, Messiah Yeshua. They're mocking him now. And so Jesus um, basically causes them all, chase, says to chase them all out of the, the house, dismissed him. Yes, gentle Jesus chased them out and, um, because of their, he knew that the doubt and unbelief would somehow affect the people around him. And he raised that little girl back to life, which is absolutely a delight for her parents and her. And these things, you know, we still got these accounts of people being raised from the dead today. I mean, there's more and more. I mean, the, he says in the last days, his Holy Spirit's going to be poured out on, on, on true believers. So I just want to help you tonight build up your faith in the Most Holy Ghost. Um, Jude one twenty tells us to do the it. Um, we just stay in faith. And now let's talk about that a moment. Faith, you only need the size of a, a teeny, eeny, weensy, microscopic, almost um, mustard seed, right? Just a teeny bit of it is all you need. That's what Jesus tells us. You just need the faith of a mustard seed. That's very, very tiny. It's like the, about the size of a pinhead. And you can um, move mountains with it. So, I'm sure each person here hearing the sound of my voice tonight has at least that much faith. Now we've got to take that faith and mix it with the Word of God. And, and, and in spite of all the things that are going on, all the atrocities that, we, you know, the mainstream, we call them lamestream now, news media, because think about who, who controls the, the prince of the air, right? The airwaves, and um, you're not getting the information. Um, that maybe that, like last year, we, all we heard about was Ebola, one or two people had died from it. But they ignore all the atrocities and the beheadings and the, the torture of, of, of Christians in the Middle East. We, we weren't hearing about any of that, and they downplayed all the ones that are happening in England on over here in America, Canada. I mean, what's with that? <laughs> so, and all that's going on, and you've got this... Um, as Alay likes to say, UFOs are burgeoning and, 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 and not going away. We've got an incredible increase of UFO, UFO activity happening. Um, you've got um, mountains of debt that doesn't seem any way to fix any of that. People know that we're in the lost days. All these things, Matthew 24, we talked about earlier in the show, are unfolding at an accelerated rate, and yet you're called to do what? You're called to share the gospel of Jesus with everyone you, you can. You're called to lay hands on the sick and, and so they'd be healed in the name of Jesus, Yeshua. You're called to help cast out evil spirits in the name of Jesus, be baptized in the Holy Spirit, and, and take this to the next level. So we want to have great faith. Um, nobody automatically is going to hear great faith. I do think because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And so you've got to say something for something to happen. Faith requires us to 
to take an action. It's, it's a choice we make. Um, so, the, you know, disciples even, they, um, they were struggling with uh, a, a young boy that, that was brought to them. They, they couldn't do anything for him. And the father of that boy went to, to see Jesus personally. He said, yeah, your disciples couldn't help my, my son. And he's thrown himself in. He's having these fits. Sounds like seizures. And, and at some point in, in the exchange of the conversation, the man realizes that because of his sins, his, his, his issues, that his son is suffering, which would have been transgenerational epigenetic inheritance, right? And so he cries out, a, a sincere cry, Jesus, help me in my unbelief. Well, that's still valid for you today. If that's what you're struggling with, you can cry that out. And the Lord's so full of mercy, grace, and love that he will, will come to you and he will surround you in his extravagant love. And we just thank him, you know, um, for, for by stripes we are healed and that we can speak the word of God out. In fact, when, when you submit to God, James 4, 7 tells us, right, submit to God or to resist the devil, stand firm against him, and then he will flee from us. It's just like any coward. And um, I remember a story where um, there's this young lad that, came home and jumped on his dad's lap and was crying. He said, I don't want to ever go back to school. The, the bully really gave me a hard time today. I don't want to go back. To, don't make me ever go back. And his father said, look, you go back tomorrow and you look that bully straight in the eye and you say to him, I'm not afraid of you any longer. You do that and he will back down. So the young boy goes back to school the next day, sees the bully coming and he says to him, I'm not afraid of you any longer. And, and the bully looked terrified and took off running. And so the little boy turns around and he walked right into his father who was standing right behind him. And I just think that's a fantastic picture of what the Lord is doing in our lives. He just wants you to step out in faith. And, and he's right there to make it happen. So if you want to move some mountains, whatever's going on in your life, we're going to be radical, outrageous for the, with the love of Christ. Um, this is what we were called to do. Uh, you know, it's, you, we, speaking professions of faith, again, you know, unless we're a doer of the word, it's not going to work in any dimension. Um, so you can call on the name of Jesus you know, all you want if, if, if you're not um, being a doer of the word. If you love God, keep his commandments. And then these things will happen for you, right? So we, we want to, um, the, the Lord is, is going to meet all your needs according to you in his riches and glory, right? We, we, we read this in Philippians 4.19. But think about it. If you're like a gossiper, um, you slander somebody, you, you're, you're making division uh, within body of believers, you, you're always in strife, um, you're stressed out, you're in fear. Um, you can you can basically forget about making all those faith confessions because they're really not going to work in any dimension. Um, so you've got to um, establish that you're going to do it God's way, and then it will work. And it's it's very important um, to to speak the truth because as you're speaking the truth or you're reading the truth out loud, it, it you're you're learning it quicker. It, it it's establishing itself at least three times faster that way according to a number of researchers. Um, you know, quoting my God shall supply all my needs by stripes I'm healed. Um, making these confessions, right? A lot of people making confessions wondering why it, it's so slow coming. Well work on, ask the Lord, you know, where has the enemy got a legal right to my life? We, we read in Deuteronomy 28, it, it pretty much lists, um, you know, I mean, actually, think about the prophecy conference. Deuteronomy 28 tells us, um, and it shall come to pass if. Now, that's very prophetic, isn't it? But it gives us a choice. With this still, even though God knows everything, the beginning from the end, how it's all going to play out, um, we still have a choice in the matter. So, and it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to do all this stature this day, that all these blessings shall come and overtake you. So you're going to be blessed in every good thing. 
And then in verse 15, it, it reverses the it. If you won't be a doer of the word, then the curses are allowed to be activated in your life. And God's not the one that puts it on you. you. You willingly have made a choice to allow the enemy to come in and, and um, be the, the God over certain areas of your life. And so it goes on to talk about every sickness and every disease. I think verse 61 even tells us every sickness, every disease not mentioned in this list is also included. So that'd be any new strain of um, viruses that mad scientists gone um, wrong in some laboratory making some sort of um, thing to unleash on the world and all that stuff. And no matter what, when anybody tells you something's incurable, it's not. There's no such thing as an incurable disease because all things are possible with God. You know, there's amazing stories like um, John G. Lake, who had a, a, a marvelous ministry in the 1900s where there's an account where, I, I don't know whether it, he actually held this in his hand or um, this is on, on a um, glass slide, but he, John G. Lake wanted to go into an area that was diseased. There was some sort of terrible epidemic going on, and the doctors and professionals there said, you can't go in there, you'll die. And he said, no, I won't. I serve the living God. So John G. Lake had, he had um, quit um, medical school a month from graduating and went into the ministry instead and he was a very devoted man of God, and he he didn't get everything right. None of us did this right in the world, but he did a lot of really good things. Saw hundreds of thousands of miraculous miracles and people getting saved, led people to salvation. So they, they gave him this disease. Um, whether he held it, I, I don't know, but it was on his blood. And, and they had the doctors, because he was a bit of a scientist, and, and he submitted to an experiment, and they showed under a microscope that the moment the, the, the virus of this disease touched his blood, the disease died. And he, his explanation was, well, I'm covered in the blood of Jesus, so any disease would have to get through the blood of Jesus to get to me first. And it's just ankled up, and is it? So I think we're about out of time for tonight. Um, but again, we want to um, stay on the path. You know, I mean, I, I know... A lot of these arguments people bring up, you know, why people aren't healed. They're going to quote um, things like, well, what about uh, Paul's thorn in the flesh? Well, if you really read it carefully, it doesn't say it was a sickness anyways. Um, and you get into the Word and, and just be a doer of the Word, right? And then we'll, we'll have enough faith that, 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 to do what God's asked us to do. So faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. I know there's, there's churches that believe this and they have a healing line and then maybe 5% of the people they pray for getting healed. Well, it's wonderful for the 5%, but what about the 95% that didn't get healed? So we need to, to get in there and, and find out why. Ask questions. Ask the right questions. And, you know, Psalm 103 tells us that God wants to heal all our diseases, every single one of them. And um, if we're going to represent the, the Lord and, and be true born again believers, then let's let's do it the right way. Let's act like a child of God all the time and go be a blessing to everyone. So I pray that um, this has encouraged you today, tonight, and um, just simply keep pushing forward and trust the Lord for all things. So we will see you again next week for another spiritual encounter. I'm looking forward to it. Um, so here, there, or in the air. And if for the rest of you, um, you can live stream this weekend with Ale Mazzuli and I, Chief Joseph Riverwind, and, and Laura Lynn will be there. Uh, Chief Joseph's wife, Dr. Laura Lynn Riverwind, and Bill Flynn. Oh, it's going to be a fantastic time, I believe, because I know the Lord's going to show up and do wonderful things. So you can live stream it, um, freedomslightchurchofgod.org. And I will see you next week, hopefully, if we're not raptured out of here first, and for another spirit.
Is there a war coming in the Middle East? Are we headed toward a one-world government, a one-world religious system? Will America be attacked again? Do ancient prophetic texts warn of the time we are living in? Are we in the last days, the time of Jacob's trouble, the end of the world as we know it? And what are the increase of UFO sightings? When we may disagree as to what is causing the phenomena, we can agree that it is real, burgeoning, and not going away. Is this the coming great deception that ancient prophecy, great deception that ancient prophecy warns us about? Does time seem to be accelerating? Join me, your intrepid host, L.A. Marzulli, as we explore these and other riveting and stimulating topics. This is Acceleration Radio. On behalf of the Upper Room Fellowship and Casper McLeod Ministries, we just want to take this moment to thank you for, for listening tonight. If you want to get closer to God and be blessed in all good things, simply make Him the Lord over all your life, not just a convenient part of your life. Now is a good time to surrender all your life to the Lord Jesus. If you draw close to God, He draws close to you. So it's not just signing some salvation card, it's rather it's practicing every day to learn and obey the Word of God because this is a really narrow path and very few find it and stay on it. In fact, we read in Matthew 7, 14, Jesus said, Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few therein find it. Now remember, the Lord created you for His pleasure, and you're truly awesome. So just pray with your whole heart and faith right now. And trust the Lord to do His part and save you, restore you, and bless you, and heal you, and work miracles in your life. If you've never prayed that prayer of salvation, let's do it right now. Say this with me. God Almighty, have mercy on my soul, a sinner. I truly believe that Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Messiah Yeshua, is who he says he is. And that he died on that cross and he shed his blood for the forgiveness of all my sins. I believe Jesus rose again from the dead on the third day and he's forever alive. Lord, please forgive me for all the wrong things that I've done in my life. And in my generations, going all the way back to Adam, as I now forgive all those who've ever wronged me, including myself. And I'll accept your forgiveness, God. And I make Jesus my Lord and my Savior. Amen. Well, hallelujah. Because what the Lord Jesus has accomplished on that cross, you now qualify for blessings and healing to all your body and to spend eternity with Christ. Praise the Lord. Congratulations. Now may Jesus be glorified through the life that you live. Join us again next week for more spiritual encounters here on The Fringe. Same place, same time. And if you've got anything you'd like to ask us, a prayer request, if you'd like to be considered to be a guest, please contact us on the web at theupperroomfellowship.org. That's theupperroomfellowship.org and Casper McLeod Ministries. And I pray the Lord's supernatural peace, healing, provision, protection cover you always with oceans of agape love this is pastor casper i will see you next week stay tuned and fasten your seatbelts because my mate la marzulli is coming at you next